commander for your sake. The Emperor is... How could I? You have forgotten who... I'm not who I used to be. Remember who you are. Your father. Luke, you can destroy the Emperor. He has foreseen this. It is your destiny. Join me. And together, we can... Man of the Marathon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, uh... And he still has that booming voice. Oh, yeah. 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 Robeson was a hero. Yes. I think the most committed human being that ever lived. I, I discovered another one uh, in, in Vernon Johns, and someone I did not know about. You played his life. He was we, a minister. We, we played at it. We played a bit of it, yeah. But yeah. I think that, that story has yet to be explored. And uh, there's some wonderful sermons that he wrote, and one that's, that's yeah. been recorded. It's uh, the romance of death. That is, the man believed in education. He believed, he believed that he, he learned uh, Greek and Latin even before, before school. And, uh, and he challenged all of us. Uh, what did he say in that sermon, the romance of death? About uh, not just accepting death, but, uh, but uh, seeing it as the end of a great life. Yeah. You have to have a great life before you die, you know. Somehow, yeah. you have to bring something to the world. He, he, he felt that if you didn't contribute, didn't produce something in the world, you were a parasite. And uh, it bothered a lot, a lot of black people. Because mm. they were, they had gotten, you know, through Tuskegee, and they had gotten through, got, got their degrees, and they were teaching in colleges. And he said, "No, you got to, got to do more. You got to, you got to produce." So he, um, uh, he, he was dumped uh, with, with the idea that they, they would take on young Martin yeah. Luther King, and uh, who was more malleable, they thought, you know, right. that is the, the next Avenue Baptist yeah. Church. Didn't turn out to be that way, but yeah, <laughs> he lived to what? Age, Vernon. Vernon John. John. I, I don't know the age he was. Yeah. He, he gave did, us he, did he live to see the civil rights revolution? <clears throat> yes. Accomplished he, he the began, goals he, he, accomplished he, he, in terms oh, of yes, the civil he, rights he, legislation. He lived to see. He lived to see, uh, the media catch on to the drama yeah. of that movement. Yeah. You know, with Martin and, and, and the bus boycott and Rosa Parks. Uh, but he, he he had by then stepped aside. He was yeah. kind of a uh, bohemian. You know, he would yeah. get on the road and almost undercover. He, he, he wore raggedy clothes. And, but when he dressed up, he was a very handsome, glamorous yeah. man, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. One of your favorite roles? Yeah. Well, one of my favorite people. I, I, yeah, want, I, I want to know him better. He made me understand Christianity in a way that I never understood. What before. did you understand from what he taught you about it? Well, in that sermon, it, it, it's a bit, bit complicated. I'd rather, I'd rather okay. but it basically, read the sermon someday. Right. But he taught you about faith? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Real faith. You know. mm. And, and how, how one participates in life. Uh, and not just in the name of Christ, but in the name of mankind. In the name of, yeah. the name of Let me turn back to Alan Patton and Cry the yeah. Beloved Country. Uh, the book is about forgiveness. Is it not? It is the story. That, that is a theme that, that evolves out of it. It is about two men and uh, who both lose a son. And uh, the, the, the black father discovers that his son is corrupt. And he destroys uh, the son of a, a white bigot. An African. And the white bigot. He, he's English, really. Right. Uh, the white bigot discovers that his son was a hero, or was a good man. And the irony is that my son would kill his son. That weighs on uh, Stephen Kamala, the, the, okay. the, the priest, uh, very heavily. And so when they confront each other, uh, he's really in need of forgiveness as much as um, the need to, gi to give forget forgiveness, you know. Richard Harris plays Jarvis. Yeah. I, I made sure that I didn't get to know Richard until that scene was over. Why? I, mean, I didn't want to become too comfortable with him, you know. Because I, it would... That comfort would have uh, left the edges uh, not as raw as they, they should be. I mean, I had to confront that man as if I didn't know whether he was going to kill me or hug me or what, you know. And because he no knew that. that your son had killed yeah, his son. Yeah. Cause and I need more than, than he does. And I need forgiveness. Why do you need forgiveness? Stephen Kamalo, a Zulu, Right. But an Ang Anglican priest, a very simple man, he, and that I understand, he was a rural person, with none of the sophistication or, or political awareness 
Peyton did a very interesting thing. He gave he gave uh, Stephen Kamala a brother, John Kamala, who was very hip, very aware, and very activist, you know. And uh, so he didn't have to compromise either character. He can leave them both as prototypes at each end of the pole. And uh, the young priest, which was the Sidney Poitier role in the other film, that, yeah. uh, in black and white. Yeah, yeah, great film by the way. <clears throat> they all, all they all they lack is a. It's a Jarvis, which we have in, in Richard Harris. You, you know. thought that they ought to be seen together almost. So. Oh, I wish they could, yeah. Uh, almost in tandem. That, that, that's like a school project, sure. I guess, you know. Yeah. But it could be very entertaining as well to see, see them, not in, not in contrast, but, it, but in, 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 uh, in support of each other. Sidney did not play the character you played. Uh, he played the young priest. He played the young priest. John. Who uh, has a foot in both camps, the, the camp of peace and the camp of activism as well. How is your characterization of Stephen Kamalo different than, was it Canada that played it? Canada Lee, yes. Canada Lee? He was a stalwart oak. A stalwart oak. A stalwart oak. Uh, as glorious as Sydney was, as that, that stalwart was, was Canada. And I knew I couldn't bring that to it, but I, I, I was in touch with the simplicity that I know from my, my people in Mississippi and Michigan, the farming people. Um, I mean. My first visit to a city at the age of 14, I got mugged every day and didn't know what it was. You know, that's how green and unaware I was. What did you think it was? Well, some other this guys the way they wanted my money. Here. That's yeah, okay. all. They're not yeah. giving them money. I, the idea of fighting over it mm. that never occurred to me. And, and I guess that's what saved my life. Or, but yeah. then it was not as dangerous to get mugged in those days as it is, as it is now. But um, that, that unawareness and that, that lack of any, any, any defense against what the urban world can dump on you which includes degradation, and not just racism, but all the harsh things that, that happened in there. And I guess Alan Payton was a bit anti-urban in a way. Mm. This book was that, written in 1946 or 8, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. It was, yeah, it's set in 1946, yeah. two years before apartheid became official. Yeah. So when he wrote it, he did not know that apartheid would come to an end. Had oh, no I way. He probably knew. He, he was very active uh, with the Liberal Party. He, he established it, didn't he? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think he represents, uh, he, in, in the movie, he is the, uh, the Evans character. Yeah. Very dedicated, and a good man, very dedicated to helping the youth um, in, in, their, in their troubled times. You know, yeah. The book was an instant classic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, people yeah. all over the world said yeah. this was their first view and understanding yeah. of how awful... It was pre-apartheid. It, it, pre it, it doesn't that show the horror of it so much as it shows the... the the simple reality of it, how mundane yeah. racism is, how, how easy it is for the Jarvis to say, oh, well, they live in their world, we live in ours. It's so easy. That's the worst kind of racism, is the easy racism. Kind of you benign neglect. Brand, yeah. Worse than that, it's just sort of, uh, sort of a dumb kind of a... Uh, oh, and that's... Uh, I, what he knew, uh, uh, he, he, um, he, his, his, his story preceded... Uh, Apartheid by two years. I think he knew. Um, uh, I think uh, it was around that time that well, didn't, didn't Smuts have a, a campaign to bring in uh, one man, one vote? Mm -hmm. And that terrified the right wing so much that they, they really marshaled their, their energies and all the guys that and had been codified and enshrined during and, World yeah. War II yes. all came together. And, when you went there to make this film, uh, what impact did being there and making this film and walking with the people of South Africa have on you? Well, uh, I, I tried to reserve judgment. Um, um, the first thing that hit me was the, uh, the infrastructure that had been left there that is, you know, part of the legacy of the, the English and the, and the Dutch. You know, the, I'm quite, quite impressed by the architecture, the efficiency of the roads and so on, you know. Uh, all things which you can have with cheap labor, <laughs> easily. Uh, but I, driving along, coming from the airport in, into Johannesburg, uh, people reaching out the window, uh, 40 miles an hour, to shake hands with an actor they'd seen on TV. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't expect that. That uh, Charles Dutton and James Earl Jones, they knew who, who we were. Yeah. From uh, American TV, you know. And they were reaching out just to touch. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And but but uh, to say welcome, you know. Yeah. You know? And, uh, white and black people, you know, just to you know, say welcome. You obviously know and have spoken to the greatness of Mandela. What is it about this man that spent 27 years in prison and came out the way he did 
and has now become the president of the country. Yeah. Because I guess he had a choice. He could have come out storming, he came out gentle. That was one major choice. And that's an act of strength. I think so. Oh, yeah, yeah. He has great power, and he could have came out, came out wielding it, but he wanted to share that power. He wanted yeah. to, the ANC was always a, a, a group, a, a democratic group, really. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was we, never I, but we. Yeah. Uh, but the right wing in America used to say they were all communist. They still would like to say that, but it yeah. is, it is irrelevant now. Sure, you know, it was proven otherwise, obviously. But, but the right wing over there still use that as, as a battle cry. And it, it, it's, you know, it's stupid. You know. When they would oppose uh, sanctions, they yeah. always say. And the sad thing about it is you throw away what, what is good about a left wing philosophy, that is, what, 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 what is usable, what a society needs. You, you, you throw it away out of this paranoia. You know. You're hopeful about South Africa today? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because um, it's democratic, because Nelson Mandela, when he comes to New York, spends a great deal of his time on Wall Street. He's looking for investment, because oh, yeah, he wants yeah. people to come there, because yeah. the best thing they can do is provide jobs, yes. is offer people the yeah. thing that you said in the beginning of this conversation, what most people want, a place to earn a living yeah. in dignity, yeah. provide for their family, and hope that they get an education and have a life yeah. better than they can. Yeah. And you do that. I think so South Africa is not too different from Russia. You have a, a society where there's been denied incentive for so many generations. Then you say, no, you have freedom. They say, well, okay, what do we do with it? Yeah. They need guidance. We need to bring more there than we take away. And uh, there are a lot of, lot of uh, retired businessmen who are going there as counselors yeah. you know, to, help, to help people learn the tradition of, of, of making it. <laughs> You, and and uh, yeah. uh, producing. Have you? Have, what about white South Africans? What are they? What's their attitude today? What they're learning. They're, they're learning humility. Yeah. Something they never thought they'd have to learn. They're learning it. And they're yeah. learning it's not as bad as they feared. Yeah. That they're not going to yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. Their worst fears are not going to come true. I think the concern is, is who will replace Mandela when he when he decides that you know, say I've I've done enough. You know? Yeah. But, uh, but then uh, Chris Hani, they, they, they bumped off. Uh, he, yeah. he could have been an in, inheritor. Uh, but uh, they're, 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 they're good people there. They're good people. They're, they're, they're continue that legacy. Great writing has come out of South Africa, too. You know, it's like, it's like the, the Lorca of oppressive Spain or the, <laughs> the Faulkner of oppressive Mississippi. You know, somehow you, you yeah. put enough pressure, you get you to get coal and then gold and diamond, you know. Yeah, right. right. Uh, yeah, well I, I think uh, Athol, the early Athol Fugard was a, was, was a certain sure. brilliance. And because he was forced to write and in no way use polemic, because mm -hmm. he'd be accused of trying to overthrow the government, he had to write, just give the audience the experience. It's the best way to convey an, an idea is through, through their feelings, through the, the, the experience of the characters. Is there any one that you want to play? There's, I mean, a, either a role or a character that you say, <laughs> I mean, Colin Powell, who had visions of you playing his life at some point. Uh, is there someone? No, he's offered to play my life. <laughs> <laughs> or he plays your life, yeah. With, he probably liked with, that. With, and since with, he's turned about... Charles Barkley playing you <laughs> as a young man. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, Denzel as a young man, and then Barkley as a little older. And, yeah. Uh, anybody, any character? I mean, you'd like to come back to... I'd like to do King Lear again. Would you really? Yeah. Uh, Why can't you? I mean... I mean, is there any reason? Are you, are you offered well, it every day? Is it? Uh, theater is very difficult to mount. Uh, it's very, very expensive and uh, very risky. With uh, you with, as King Lear, that's risky? Uh, well, stars, so-called stars, don't make uh, box office anymore. They, they, might, they might help. Yeah. For instance, Anand Singh w was determined that to film make here. international uh, cast, that, that, that the Jarvis would be... Uh, um, uh, Europe, you know, yeah. Western. Richard Harris plays yeah. Jarvis, right? Yeah, and, and the, the the two Kamala brothers would be Americans uh, because he wanted to be an international cast to, him, to attract the international attention. Yeah. You know? He's an interesting guy because he makes these sort of what some would call B movies. Yeah, he has, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he uses and he, and he sells them the video rights, which is the secret to those movies, I guess. Yeah. Not so much what they do in the theater, but how they sell. And he uses that.